Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends. It's another big day of Throne of Eldraine previews. We have a lot of cards to look at again today. If you're curious as to the sources of these cards, check out the description below. You can find out which content creator premiered each card. And aside from that, if you're looking to pick up Throne of Eldraine booster boxes, you can pre-order them now on FlipSideGaming.com. Just follow the link in the description below. And if you use that Heroes promo code, you can save a little cash and support the channel at the same time, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. First, we're going to look at some of the cards we saw yesterday, but we're going to look at their alternate versions. So you see here a couple showcase cards, a couple extended art cards, Witch Claw, Talisman, and Once Upon a Time. And here's three more that were revealed since yesterday, Questing Beast, Ocam Ranger, and Doom Foretold. If you want to hear my thoughts on these cards, just check out yesterday's video. We have some tokens to look at today, too. Human Cleric, Human Rogue, Human Warrior. The Cleric is a 2-1 with lifelink and haste. The Rogue is a 1-2 with haste. When this creature dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. Remember that. I'm going to reference it later. The Human Warrior has trample haste, and it's a 3-1. So we'll be looking at a card later that produces these tokens. Next, we're going to move on to the Buy a Box promo. So this is Kenrith, the Return King. You can get a foil copy of this if you buy a box at your local game store while supplies last. But you can also get non-foil copies now in the collector booster, so there is another way to get the buy a box promo if you don't actually go and buy a box from your game store. Now, let's talk about the card itself. It is a mythic, of course, being the buy a box promo. Really tailored for a commander. I mean, it's a 5 cast and costs 5, 5. It's got a lot of abilities here, and they do encompass the 5 colors, giving it the identity for each one for commander or brawl purposes. I do think this is going to be a fun card for Brawl or Commander. It lets you go into like five color good stuff. All the abilities, as you can see here, I know it's a little grainy, but they are actually all kind of like group hug abilities. You can use these on any player. That could be a fun political strategy as well. Not something I want to build around in standard or anything, but definitely has its role. Charming Prince. Okay, here you are with the extended art version of this particular card. Now, it's a bear with upside, so when limited, this is going to be fantastic for you. It is a rare, it should be good, and a lot of times people are disappointed when their rares or mythics are not big bomb cards. This is more of a utility card, a curve filler, sure, but with all those different options on it, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of value to be had here. I would be happy to play this in Drafter Sealed. Now, aside from that, because this Charming Prince behaves kind of like a charm, it gives you a lot of options, and I do think because of that, it might see some standard play, maybe alongside Agent of Treachery, perhaps. It is a human. I'm not really feeling it, though, for the modern humans deck, because that deck is just so stacked right now. Worthy Knight. Yet another rare 2-2 two, two for 2 in white with upside. So, again, with the last card, you might open this in a pack and draft your sealed and be like, oh, this isn't too amazing. But ultimately, it is a good card, as long as you have enough knights in your deck. Obviously, this will be better in draft if you can draft like Mardu Knights compared to just a random sealed pool. But even in a random seal pool, you might have enough knights for this to be pretty good. Really, a 2-2 two, two for 2 is a nice curve filler. Even if you just made 1 or 2 tokens over the course of the game, you're definitely getting more than your value out of the card. So you have to look at it that way. Now, it is a knight itself, so it will work well with knight synergy. It doesn't create knights, though. Whenever you cast a knight, you get a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Now, there are some synergies that we have seen so far where having these 1-1 one, one creatures might be good for you. For example, Love Struck Beast was one that we saw a few days back that needs a 1-1 one, one creature to be able to attack. So I do think there's going to be more of those type of things going on in the set, so we'll keep our eyes out for them. As for Standard, this might see a little Standard play. This would be very good with Corpse Knight, I will give it that. And of course, if you want to play this in Commander or Brawl, Knight Tribal is an option for you there too. This one comes to us from a Chinese Simplified Language Preview. It's another rare, Emery Lurker of the Lock. So this does a lot. First off, it's not very expensive, costing a blue and two for one, two, but it does cost one less for each artifact you control, so that's something. When it enters the battlefield, you put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard, so it mills you, and that's because of this next ability. Tap, choose target artifact card in your graveyard, you may cast that card this turn. So this can do one of two things for you. You kind of mill yourself in an artifact thick deck for some value, and basically it's kind of like card draw then, and you use her tap ability to play the cards out of your graveyard. And or you could use artifacts that have sacrifice abilities, sacrifice them, they go to the graveyard, bring them back, do it all over again. Could be quite good. 
In standard, there's not a ton for her to do right now, but we still have a lot more set to see that could change. They are giving us a fair amount of artifacts within this set, and if nothing happens right now, maybe down the road. Where this card could really shine, though, I think is modern. Works well with Goblin Engineer. Maybe try it out in Urza Thopter Sword, maybe even Affinity. Legacy, how about Storm Decks with Lion's Eye Diamond? Vintage has a lot of things. Black Lotus is just one of them that you could use with this card. Aside from that, Commander, I think, is another place where this card is going to be incredible. There's tons of combos. You can probably list them all day, right? All sorts of things that you can either just find value by milling into the graveyard and then casting later. Or, like I said, the true value is probably coming from sacrificing things for benefit over and over again. Microsynth Lattice is a card in the Commander format, as well as many other formats right now. This plays really well with that card. With the limited formats, yeah, you know, this isn't going to be super strong there either, probably, but I'm sure they're going to give us something to do with this card if you happen to pick it up as a rare and drafter sealed. Hypnotic Sprite. On the left side, you see the regular copy. On the right, the showcase copy of the card. You know, this is a good card because of the versatility. Like the adventure side or the creature side, nothing crazy on either one. Two blue for a 2 1 flyer, or use Mesmeric Glare. That costs the blue and two. Counter target spell would convert a mana cost three or less. So I do think this has some potential for standard play, and here's why. The versatility is nice if you come up against, say, Teferi Time Raveler, because now you have a counter spell that's not a dead card. You could go ahead and play the creature, and it could pressure Teferi or other Planeswalkers. So I do think it does have maybe a very specific utility for the standard that may allow it to see play, even if it is just out of sideboards. When it comes to limited, you'll appreciate the versatility there, too. Sometimes you don't want to commit to a counter spell in your playables. Just because it's one of those things where if I'm in a controlling build, then yes, I do want counter spells. But if I'm trying to be more aggressive, and many times you are, especially in sealed, then I'm not going to take the spot away from a creature. So this can kind of be the best of both worlds, which is nice. Also, it is a fairy, which may be relevant. Clack Bridge Troll. Here's another rare that is a very solid card. It's an 8-8 for 5 with Trample and Haste. And when it enters the battlefield, Target opponent gets three zero white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sack a creature. If they do, you tap this, gain three life, and draw a card. First off, it has haste. That is huge. Secondly, if my opponent is going to sacrifice a creature, whether it's one of these tokens or whatever, I'm gaining three life, which is not insignificant, and I'm drawing a card, which is huge. You can't let your opponent just sit there and draw cards all day. If you don't lose to this, you're going to lose the card advantage. So you're kind of in a no-win situation. Typically, I kind of mark points off a card if they give the opponent a decision like this, but this decision is so bad either way that I can't feel too bad about it. So yeah, this thing will see standard play, I have no doubt, probably in a few different types of builds. If you're lucky enough to open this and draft your sealed, you're going to be having a good day. Monocolor card doesn't ask too much of you. It's going to be fantastic. Claim the Firstborn. Okay, this is a cheap threat and effect. It just costs one, with the drawback being you can only take a creature converted mana cost three or less. Now, with that being said, I think this is phenomenal. That cut in price down to one red, even if you can't take the big creature, still going to do a ton of work for you in draft and sealed. Aside from that, I think this could see some sideboard play in standard, maybe even modern, just because the cost is so affordable. Robber of the Rich. This one is a mythic and it is pretty pushed. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with so much upside that it just fills the text box. Alright, so first off, without even reading it, it's got to be good, right? So I do think this will see standard play. The thing is, it's not asking a lot of you just to red in one. It has reach. It has haste. The haste is very important on this card, which we'll talk more about in a second. Now, whenever this attacks, if defending player has more cards in their hand than you do, which shouldn't be too hard to pull off if you're playing an aggressive build, then you get to exile the top card of their deck. During any turn, if you attacked with a rogue, which includes this one but could be other rogues, you may cast that card and spend mana as though it was mana of any color to do so. So the idea here is you're going to be able to attack in with this, hopefully like on turn two, before your opponent really has a good blocker. And it doesn't even need to do damage, just attack. Then you exile the card off the top of the deck, and then later in the game, you're going to have a little more gas when you start running out of gas. This will be best if you can keep it alive and keep a path open, but if it just attacks and dies in combat, you still can find value. Other copies of this and other rogues could even add more value as well. This is definitely going to see standard play, I have no doubt. Mono Red Aggro will need something like this definitely as we go into the new meta. They lost a lot of pieces, but here's at least one replacement for them. 
in limited it's a mythic you won't see it a lot but it is a very good early game card if you can get it down you could perhaps tip the scales of the game at the very beginning searing barrage nice piece of instant speed removal for drafter sealed cost a red in four or deals five damage to target creature but if you paid at least three red when you paid the casting cost then this will also deal three damage to that creature's controller Skullknocker Ogre. This is okay for limited. I mean, the stats are fine. 4-3 for four, 4, especially in sealed, you're usually okay playing something like that. But check out the ability. When this deals damage to an opponent, that player discards a card at random. If they do, they draw a card. So they get to rummage, but it is a random discard, which could mess with their hand. I do like that, but very quickly an opponent can kind of mitigate the ability because as long as they're able to play their cards, I mean, they might have a big bomb stuck in their hand and they could lose it. That's where this card is really going to shine. But as long as they can kind of play the cards that they want to play, get them out of their hand, hang on to the cards that they don't want, even though they might take decent damage, this almost becomes like an advantage to them in some ways because then they're actually sort of rummaging because they're just hanging on to, say, extra lands that they don't need and they're going to go deeper into their deck now. So that is a little bit awkward for me. I could see myself playing it some of the time, or maybe siding it in if my opponent has a higher curved deck. Zerkara the Bold. I kind of like this card for Commander. Not necessarily the best aggressive Commander that exists out there, but this could be a fun one. Legendary creature, so of course this could be a mono red Commander. Human Knight, so hey, maybe just throw this into a Knight build in Commander and call it a day. But if you do want to build around this, you could do something with Burn. With that casting cost, it might be a little better in Brawl than Commander, of course, but I think either way, you'll find some fun things to do with this card. Just the fact that she's able to continually let you see more cards just with her tap ability, if nothing else, that is very good if you're running a super aggressive build. How about Standard, though? Could she see play there? I don't know. It would be tough, I think. I was thinking about Mono Red Aggro, but there's a lot of other cards right now that let you see more cards that ask less than this, and I'm thinking about things like Light Up the Stage. Chandra Fire Artisan costs one less converted mana cost, so does Experimental Frenzy right now. Although, if there's a more aggressive knight build out there, maybe she fits into the higher portion of the curve. Doubling is a card that lets you see more cards, but also is a knight herself. Weaselback, Red Cap, not a lot to say about this one. Fine limited card, it's a goblin knight. If you are on a Mardu knight strategy, this could be very good for you. Or if you just are in an aggressive build, even if you don't have a lot of knight synergy, this is a fine card as well. Curious Pair comes to us from a French language preview card. Not a lot to say about this one. There's going to definitely be some kind of food token draft deck out there. And if you're playing that deck, this will be just fine for you. Cheap way to get a food token on the battlefield as early as turn one for just one green if you use that treats to share portion of the card. After that, you got a 1-3 creature. Gums up the ground a little bit for two. Feasting Troll King. They are really setting up for Theris Devotion in this set. But anyway, this is a great card regardless. Yes, it is asking a lot when it comes to green. Four green and two. But check out these stats. Seven, six. Vigilance, trample. When this enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens. Sacrifice three food tokens. Return this from your graveyard to the battlefield. And you can only activate that during your turn, but still, fantastic. What do we do with this thing? Well, limited, if you're comfortable with that four green and the casting cost, you have a very good rare here. That whether you're playing any kind of food token strategy or not, this is just going to be phenomenal for you. If it hits the battlefield, you're in a real good spot. I think this is actually standard playable as well. Maybe in a green stompy or ramp deck, or maybe even in reanimation with other ways to create food tokens. Who knows? They might give us the pieces to do something like that. We still have a lot more set to see for sure. But I do think in some capacity, this does make it into standard this season. Here's another Chinese simplified language preview. It is loosely translated Garenberg Paladin. Now, this is a, another good common card for Drafter Seal. Nothing crazy here. It is a knight, so it will play into knight synergies. Although it's not Mardu colors, that's definitely worth noting. And it's a 4-4 four, four for 5, but if you spend a little extra green, could perhaps come in with a plus 1, plus 1 counter, making it a 5-5. Five, five. And it is kind of nice that it cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. It can't be taken down by a few smaller creatures. Here's another Chinese simplified language preview. This time the translation is Return from Clouds. This is kind of a sweet card. For a green and three instant speed, kind of works like a regrowth in a way. You get to take a card from your graveyard back to your hand. But additionally, you get to choose another card and it goes on top of your deck. When you do that, though, you do exile this card, so no shenanigans there. 
has Adamant as well. If you spend three green when you cast this, then you get to take both those cards and put them right into your hand. Still exile this, though. So ultimately, I think this is a fantastic card. It's quick at instant speed. Let's talk standard first. I do think this does see a little bit of standard play. One thing that I thought you might be able to do with it is just splash some green into a control build at the end of your opponent's turn if you don't have anything else to do with your mana. Pay the four, it's an instant. Go grab some cards. Even if one goes to the top of your deck, no big deal. You're about to draw anyway. Then you have these cards in your hand. And those could be cards you need to just keep your opponent behind. The control deck at some point is just going to control the game and lock it out, right? Well, there's those middle turns where it's kind of like I'm almost there, but something could go wrong. This does allow you to grab, like, I don't know, a thought erasure and a counter spell and just keep your opponent from ever catching up. That's just one way to look at this card. I do think other decks could be interested in it as well. When it comes to limited, it's an uncommon. These will be floating around, and this will be fantastic for you in Drafter Sealed because a lot of times in a long game, especially, you fill your graveyard and then you start drawing too many lands. Well, this allows you to take some of your key cards back, and it doesn't care what they are. Lands, sorceries, instants, artifacts, creatures, any card, you can pull it back, and that's pretty phenomenal. Here's another Chinese Simplified Language preview card here, Seek the Mighty, loosely translated. And before I go any further, I gotta point out the art here. Is that a man giving a German suplex to a bear? I think that's actually what's happening there, because punching the bear apparently isn't good enough anymore. We had to escalate it to the next level. And that's crazy, so there you go. Anyway, what does the card do? It's pretty good for limited. I mean, it's not something I would play outside of Drafter Sealed, but it is a fight mechanic that gives you the option as long as you have enough green. Again, at least three has to be paid when you cast the spell. Then the creature that you actually target will be indestructible until end of turn. Yeah, not bad. It also gives a plus one, plus one counter regardless. So you're going to be able to take even a smaller creature you have and perhaps take out something a little bit bigger. Yeah, for the casting cost, sorcery speed, it's not going to do much outside of that environment, but you'll be happy to play this in Drafter Sealed. Here's a French language preview card, loosely translated, Trail of Crumbs, and this is a Drafter Sealed card that allows you to play more into that food token strategy. And if you're into that strategy, this is going to be fantastic for you. It is a cheap enchantment, a green and one doesn't really do anything so much on its own. However, whenever you sacrifice a food token, you can pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom in any order. Also, in the center of the battlefield, you get a food token to get you started. So there are other things you can be doing with food tokens other than just using them to gain life and trigger this ability. But if that's all you were doing, that wouldn't be all that bad either. So as long as you can create some food tokens, I don't think it's worth it just to have this and the one food token in your deck. But if you can create some food tokens as the game goes on, smooth out your deck a little bit, get to the permanents you need when you need them, this is one of those very early innocuous plays that sometimes wins you a game. Wildborn Preserver. Okay, this is another really sweet rare. 2-2 two, two for 2 with upside. You know I'm going to like it, right? So let's talk standard with this one first. I think it does see standard play. One deck that this feels perfect for is the Simic Flash deck. This is a 2 casting cost creature. It has flash. It has reach too. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on this. So imagine this picture, if you will. Say it's turn 4, maybe you played this on the previous turn, your opponent ends their turn. Go ahead and flash a cheap creature into play, like a Spectral Sailor. Tap those other 3 mana to put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on this. Or if need be, do that in combat as a trick. Feels pretty good. Early in the game, you could have something like a 5-5. Five five. That's crazy, right? So one thing I would say about this card is, yes, it doesn't have trample, it doesn't have evasion, and if you put too many resources into it and it gets blown up, it's not going to feel very good. But if you're just using extra resources that you weren't going to use anyway, like maybe you cast a creature and you got one extra land open, okay, throw a plus one, plus one counter on it, that will add up over the course of the game. So aside from Simic Flash, I do think this could see play in standard in other places. It's a very good card. Limited, it's a rare. You won't see it all the time, but it will be phenomenal for you there, too, for all the reasons I just mentioned. The card, again, is a good curve filler that has so much potential. Lockmare Serpent, another card with flash here. Now, this feels like it wants to be like a control finisher, but it doesn't protect itself very well. Like, it doesn't have hexproof or anything like that. But it could still be decent. Six casting costs flash, so you can kind of put it in at the end of your opponent's turn. It's sizable, 7-7. Seven, seven. 
pay a blue, sack an island. This can't be blocked this turn. Perfect for control decks. Black and sacrifice a swap. You gain one life and draw a card. So if you are pushed up against the wall, it does let you see more cards. And then you can pay a blue and black exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard. Return this from the graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability anytime you could cast a sorcery. Early in the game, maybe you're using Surveil, like you're just using Thought Erasure or something. You could toss this into your graveyard, and then later you would have access to it, so that's kind of nice. And as long as you can protect it with Counter Magic or something like that, then maybe it could get there. Normally, I would count this card out, but because we're going into a post-rotation, more narrow standard format, I'm going to give it a chance. I think it does have an opportunity maybe to make a small impact there out of a control build. Remember, those abilities do work with Shockland, so that's good. When it comes to Drafter Sealed, it's another rare bomb. Sure, you're going to love to play this, and it will be quite good for you. Outlaw's Merriment. Okay, this one is a mythic rare. It's quite good. It's an enchantment. It's going to cost you a little bit. Two white, a red, and one. At the beginning of your upkeep, though, choose one of these at random. Create a red and white creature token with these characteristics. So these are the tokens we saw earlier. However, pay attention here. 3-1 Human Warrior with Trample and Haste. Okay. 2-1 Human Cleric with Life Link and Haste. Okay. 1-2 Human Rogue with Haste and when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. You might remember at the beginning of the video, the token we saw actually says when it dies, it deals one damage. Mark Rosewater did confirm that the token image was incorrect, and this is what the token will actually say in print. One thing about that last token, though, it is a rogue, which would play well with Robber of the Rich, which is worth noting. With that being said, though, this is just very solid. I could see this seeing some standard play, maybe in a Mardu Aristocrats deck, although it feels a little slow there, but it could work out, perhaps in a slower standard. Or maybe just in a Mardu mid-range deck, you can play this with like Corpse Knight even. It could be pretty good with things entering the battlefield and that card being out there. Drafter Sealed, this thing is a bomb. Now it's a mythic. Again, you're not going to see a whole ton of this, which is probably a good thing. Because if an opponent doesn't have an answer for this pretty quickly, they're in a lot of trouble. Like if you play this on turn 4 or turn 5 and they don't have something that destroys an enchantment, which they might not have game 1. They might sideboard it in for game 2 and game 3. But game one, you might just be able to steal it with this thing. This is also a very interesting card for a commander or brawl for any sort of go wide or token strategy builds. This is extremely solid. This one's a Japanese language preview, Greedy Impulse. Another really big hybrid card here asking for four hybrid Demir this time. It's a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card in that player's hand or graveyard and exile it. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may cast it and you may spend mana as though it were any type to cast it. So we've seen this type of thing recently, or at least similar types of things. Hostage Taker, Thief of Sanity, these are good cards. I don't think this one is as good, but I don't think it's horrible either. Maybe it sees a little standard play out of sideboards, it kind of depends on where the meta goes. If you're playing a deck that's milling your opponent more for some reason, this becomes a lot better. That's something to consider for the future. Or if the standard meta becomes more graveyard-centric at some point, and maybe your opponent is just milling themselves, this will open up more options for you, but also could take a card out of their graveyard, which could be important to them later. I do think there's a role for this card, we just might not have seen it yet. Also, this is a sorcery that has very high devotion, not a permanent. So it leads me to believe that maybe sorceries and instants with high devotion might matter in Theros too. I guess we'll know more about that down the road. Roving Keep. Not the best card here, even for a limited. It's not unplayable if you really need another creature for sealed, but it just costs so much. Seven casting costs for a 5-7 defender. Seven to make it be able to attack. It does get plus two plus zero until end of turn, so that's kind of nice. And it does get trample until end of turn two, but that is a lot of resources to get this thing going. I would avoid it if I can. Obviously, you might have another trick with this, and if that's the case, wonderful. We haven't seen a lot of the set yet. And it does feel like there's at least some sort of relevance when it comes to artifacts. But remember, this even dies to blow your house down, which we saw yesterday. That's no good. So yeah, I'm not really feeling this one. Okay, with that being said, those are the cards for today. Tomorrow, we're going to come back. We're going to do the same thing and recap everything that happens in the next 24 hours when it comes to preview cards. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. 
Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.